So in this video, I'm going to share how I healed my anxiety. When I was younger, I used to experience a lot of anxiety and panic attacks. When I was 16, I went to the doctor who prescribed some medication, didn't really make any difference other than make me feel a little bit drowsy, so I stopped taking it. I did try lots of things to try and beat the anxiety. I read books, I started doing yoga, I was very worried about not being in control, worrying what people would think about me, worrying that I wasn't enough. And my anxiety got worse rather than better over time. I now understand that's because of neuroplasticity of the brain. Whatever we practice, we get good at. So if someone is practicing anxiety, they get better at it. They find more things to worry about. If someone practices calm and confidence, they get better at that. So it's important that we understand neuroplasticity. I have made a video on that and I will link that video below this one. In a nutshell, I was wiring my brain to get good at anxiety. It was as if I was installing software in my brain, a fear operating system, so that I'd get really good at generating anxiety quickly and easily. Being anxious and having ME-CFS was not a good combination because stress hinders recovery. Conversely, reducing stress supports recovery. And that's why it is really important to get a handle on our anxiety and learn how to make sense of it. When I had ME-CFS, there were times when I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel in relation to my anxiety. It was overwhelming and all-consuming. But I did learn how to overcome the anxiety. So what helped me? Firstly, understanding how I was generating anxiety and panic attacks. I had trained as a counsellor, but the tools I learned didn't really help me deal with the anxiety and I don't think they were the right tools to help other people. I remember someone saying to me they were experiencing panic attacks and I didn't really have a clear idea of how I could help them quickly to overcome their panic attacks. Whereas when I trained as a hypnotherapist and practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming, this gave me huge insights into how I was generating anxiety and panic attacks and how to change that and how to help others. And knowing that information helped me break these patterns. The second thing I did was building a connection with my body. I didn't realize at the time how important this was but I now see that it was part of the solution. Some of us disconnect to our body. This means that when we experience physical sensations or emotions that are uncomfortable, we leave our body and we go into our head, we create anxious thoughts, we catastrophize, we generate negative stories, and these are all ways of trying to make sense of our experience. So it's the part of us that is trying to take care of us, but the strategies of that part aren't really helping us in the long term. So for example, sometimes when they experience symptoms, they say to themselves, I'm never going to get well. They generate a lot of upset and frustration because they forget that they will come out of this. Okay, and this just feeds the anxiety. So learning to be in my body and building my capacity for experiencing discomfort without going to my head and creating lots of stories and catastrophizing was a big piece. One of the ways we build connection with our body is to use our body. Now, if you have ME-CFS and you're very poorly, that might be challenging. So I have created a gentle movement cheat sheet. If you'd like a copy of that, then comment gentle below and I'll send you the link to that cheat sheet. If you're able to do some very gentle yoga, gentle movement, for example, Qigong, and I've made a video about that, I'll put the link below this video, that's something you can experiment with. It's fine to start small. If your movement is restricted, then just ensure you're not pushing yourself. But building that connection with the body is really important. And the third thing I did was to build a relationship with and learn to take care of my inner child. We all have within us a part of us that is wounded. We have experienced trauma, either big T trauma or small T trauma, as Gabor Mate 
calls it. Okay, and the first step to doing that, learning to take care of that inner child who sometimes gets scared, frightened, upset, anxious, etc., is to build a connection to that part of us that is wise. Okay, so learning to do, do that help me uninstall my fear operating system and help me install my trust, my trust operating system. You have that wise part with, within you as well. I invite you to connect with this part of you that is wise right now. So I invite you to close your eyes, obviously only close your eyes if it's safe to do so. But consider that there is a part of you that has the capacity for wisdom. That part of you has the capacity for patience, playfulness, pragmatism. That part of you has the capacity to be present. You've had times in your life, I suspect, where you just felt present, grounded, connected. That part of you has the capacity for acceptance. That part also has the capacity to discern what's appropriate in this situation. So that example I gave earlier, if we are experiencing a symptom and we're saying to ourselves, I'm never going to get well, this wise part has the capacity to soothe that part of you that's in fear and actually be the pragmatist. Say, look, this is temporary, it will pass. Okay, it's like soothing an upset child, okay? That part of you has the capacity for calm, for compassion, for trust. That part of you has the capacity to tap into your inner strength that is there. It's a bit like the blue sky. Sometimes you can't see it, but it is there. And that part of you has the capacity to surrender when it's appropriate to do so, to let go, to come out of your head and to connect with your body and your emotions and to build a window of tolerance for those things so that we can actually navigate a path towards healing. I'd like you to consider how often do you remind yourself that this part of you is there. This part of you has shown up many times in your life when either you or someone close to you was faced with a challenge and you just responded in a resourceful way. What would it be like to remind yourself each day that that part of you is there? If you think that would be useful, then you are welcome to access my flip the switch technique, part of which I've just done. And you can get that in an audio format, a PDF, so you can just follow along and learn the steps and do it for yourself. I do it every morning when I wake up, when I remember. So when you're ready, you can just open your eyes. So now I'm much more calm and confident. In the past, making a video like this would have been terrifying. Actually, now it's much easier for me to do that. And I don't mind if I make mistakes because I'm going to post this video with the mistakes in it. Okay. Because I'm not too worried about what people think. All right. I'm not saying I'm never going to experience anxiety, but in the main, it doesn't overwhelm me like it used to. And I know how to deal with it. Okay. So for example, if I spot myself generating an unhelpful thought that I know is a kind of protective mechanism, that fear part of me is taking over, trying to take care of me, I'll just recognise, ah, that part of me has shown up. I'll just say hello to that part. I'll thank that part of me for trying to take care of me. But I'll reassure it that I'm actually in charge now. We are safe and I'm going to take care of that part of us, that part of me that's operating from fear. So let me know what your key takeaway is from this video. I'd love to know. If you'd like more tips, do like follow, subscribe, keep going, you've got this. Wishing you great health.